Hello everyone, welcome to Mark 1 Design EMC video channel. In today's session, we're going to demonstrate an alternative immunity test method to the bulk current injection method, also known as the BCI test. Capacitive injection probe methods that we use successfully reproduce the BCI failures in the same frequency range. Therefore, we in this video, we will demonstrate how to make a flying probe, how to set the immunity test sets up, and demonstrate by using the flying probe injection method that we can reproduce the same BCI failures. The product on the test is an automotive part, which during the BCI EMC immunity test showed problems between 5 MHz and 10 MHz range. As mentioned, we did try another two methods before we apply the capacitive injection method. The first method we tried is a homemade bulk current injection method, as shown here. I do apologize for the messy setup here, but the idea is to inject a 5 MHz to 10 MHz RF noise by using this homemade uh, current probe and we monitored it using an, another RF current probe. The RF amplifier we use is a TechBox TBM DA4 which you will see later in detail. And here is a zoomed in version of the test setup. What we found is the power level that we injected into this homemade current probe is far lower than the actual required power uh, to generate the same level of RF current in the cable. And also, if we apply a very big power, I'm, I got a suspicion that the core might be saturated before we reach to that level. Now, uh, Ken Wyatt proposed similar methods, and he said if you put a lot of uh, choke, you know, the, the normal sort of common mode choke, snap-on choke we use for EMC purposes uh, on this side, then you should block the RF energy to go in this direction, rather so the RF current energy will go this direction. So I also did try that uh, as well. I put lots of ferrite cores on this side. However, uh, I still could not reproduce the failure modes that the customer see, uh, customer saw in the BCI test. The second alternative method we tried is to use a TEM cell. As you can see here, we use a TechBox TBTC1 TEM cell. Uh, in my opinion, the TEM cell method should work quite nicely because I read the papers published by many you know, academics and industrial uh, companies. They successfully demonstrated that by using TEM cell, they can achieve similar level of BCI uh, interference on the module uh, on the test. However, in this case, I could not see the failures. Maybe the next step is to choose a smaller TEM cell, um, so the RF field is much larger than the RF field of this TEM cell and give it another try. Uh, but um, as this test setup suggests that we could not reproduce the same failure modes. Okay, so now the next step is to try the flying probe injection method. But before we show you the test setup, let's look at how to make a simple and easy flying probe. This is the flying probe we're using for this test. People call it flying probe or wind probe or pin injection probe, it's the same thing. The structure of this um, probe is rather easy. You need a semi-rigid coaxial cable cut into half. You solder the shield of the coax to this little uh, copper plane or if you have a PCB you can put it on and then solder it to the ground plane of your little PCB. The purpose of having this is to increase the capacitance coupling between the probe and the DUT power or ground plane. Um, because of this the name wind probe or flying probe um, it comes from I think. 
you also need a, a high voltage uh, capacitor. So in this case, I'm using 250 volts, uh, 100 pic farads. Um, the value of this capacitance is uh, is quite important. Uh, really depends on the frequency you want to inject. You you pick up the most suitable capacitance value. For instance, most people use 47 pic farads. Uh, simply because if you uh, look at the mass 47 pic farad at 68 megahertz you get sort of 50 ohm impedance of this capacitance and that's normally you know the the, the region and of frequency people are interested and has problems um, in this case because I'm injecting uh, rather low frequency so I will be injecting 5 megahertz to 10 megahertz uh, range noise therefore I picked um, 100 picofarad uh, you just need to work out at which frequency um, the impedance is is between sort of 50 ohm and uh, 100 ohm let's just say you don't want to pick up a capacitance value that will give you a very large impedance value uh, compared to 50 ohm simply because you will connect this probe to the RF amplifier and the RF amplifier has a 50 ohm output impedance. If this impedance turns out much larger than the output of your um, RF am amplifier impedance, then chances are this will be overloaded and got too much loss. Here shows the test setup for the pin injection method we're going to perform. We have the DUT um, here. I covered in a, in a sheet to cover the confidential um, information. Uh, it's an automotive part, therefore we supply uh, 12.5 volts uh, on the power supply unit. You will need a signal generator to provide signal input to the RF amplifier. Then the RF amplifier outputs the uh, RF noise we're going to inject into the suspicious line. In order to monitor the injected current, we're using an RF current probe and we monitor uh, on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so the signal generator I'm using is TTI 240 megahertz signal generator. In this case, I'm going to do a sweep between 5 megahertz and 10 megahertz because that's the range that this module um, is quite susceptible to. Um, and the output of the signal generator is going to be connected to the RF power amplifier. For the RF power amplifier, I'm using TechBox TBM DA4. It has 37 dBm output, very, very powerful. The, in, uh, the input, you have to, to protect it as always, so it never exceeds the 3 dBm uh, maximum limit. This module has a frequency range between 100 kilohertz to 50 megahertz, which is uh, ideal for this case. Uh, if you want to inject a different range, perhaps a 300 megahertz or even higher frequency, you can use a TBM DA3, which works in a different uh, frequency range. But the output is also 37 dBm. Uh, the flying probe we already talked about and now you can see it is connected to the green line which is the lean communication line of this module. Now you always wanted to monitor the injected noise just to make sure that you know the level is right and also you wanted to to measure uh, you know during the frequency sweep you wanted to see the behavior of the module so Highly recommended to connect an RF current probe. So in this case, um, I'm using a tech box, 500 megahertz bandwidth snap-on uh, current probe. And the current probe uh, output is connected to the spectrum analyzer. In this case, again, I'm using my Siglent SSA3021 uh, spectrum analyzer. So I will see during the uh, frequency sweep, I can see the uh, current basically uh, sweeping across uh, on the screen of the spectrum analyzer. You will also need a lean, lean analyzer. So this is from microchip lean analyzer I'm using. And lean communication will be monitored on the um, 
laptop here. Okay, so now I switch on the RF amplifier. As you can see from from now, you know you can see the LED of the um, uh, device on the test is just constant on. And if we look at the um, lean communication, everything seems perfect. Okay, yeah. And what will happen if we switch on the um, noise source? So now I'm switching on the signal generator, which will give me a, a, a frequency sweep. Let's do it. First thing you'll notice is that the um, LED starts flashing, and we can, of course, monitor the current going through the, uh, the cable. So that's the common mode current monitored. And you can see the LED starts flashing. And what about the, uh, here, we have the checksum error. Yeah, so that basically shows that the DUT on the test has some immunity issue in the frequency range uh, we just injected. So I'll then the next task is to look into the layout and the um, schematics of this uh, DUT and try to have the problem fixed. One final note uh, of the test setup is the uh, power amplifier has a maximum input um, power rating of 3 dBm. We mentioned it before. This power amplifier works best with the spectrum analyzer tracking generator output because the tracking generator of a spectrum analyzer often has a output range of minus 20 dBm to 0 dBm, which will never exceed the limit here. However, for this test, we are using the spectrum analyzer for monitoring purposes. Therefore, we supply the um, input power of the RF amplifier using a signal generator. When using signal generator, the output is specified in voltage term rather than power term. So you will need to work out what's the voltage limit level that will never exceed the power level here. Uh, notes that the signal generator also has a 50 ohm impedance, so you can easily work out the math yourself. For reference, for this test, we just did, I supply the output uh, of this signal generator is 330 millivolts peak to peak voltage, and that is already enough to create the failure mode we've seen during the test. To summarize, in this session, we demonstrated an alternative immunity test method to BCI test. Before that, we also tried another two alternative methods, but for some reasons, we could not reproduce the same failure that the customer saw in the BCI test. We showed you how to make a simple flying probe, we demonstrated how to set up the test and perform the test. The pin injection method proves to be a very useful tool for troubleshooting and pre-compliance EMC testing. Again, as usual, if you enjoy this video, please do not hesitate to share with your colleagues. And if you like, please subscribe our video channel and check the latest updates on our website.